I don't know why this one more than the rest, but for some reason, I kind of remember this game better than NHL 16 and 17. It's also taking forever to load already, so I can only imagine what the simulation is going to be like. But anyway, as the title suggests, I'm going to be accepting all trades. I have no idea how many trades you got on this game, because I don't think I was really into franchise mode or be a GM, whatever it is in this at the time. Thank you very much for playing. You know what? Once again, you're welcome. Oh yeah, these menus were a thing. I'm going to go ahead and randomize a team from play now. So we get the St. Louis Blues. What a strange looking screen. Oh, yo, Timothy Jimothy was still on the Blues at the time. What are all these settings now? We're going to turn injuries off obviously. I don't think difficulty matters because I'm not going to be playing any games. CPU trades will be on. Auto sign free agents, no. Trade offer notifications on. Waiver notifications on. I think we're all good there. Auto rotate goalies, yes. Don't even think about touching my lines. All right, let's start the career. Keep salary cap on and let's see how many trades we get. Maybe we'll get 10. Maybe we'll get 30. Maybe we'll get none. I have no idea what we're getting into. I also don't really want to update the trading blocks. I want to see if teams try to finesse you as much in this game as they do in the new ones. Okay, so it's going to take a moment to remember how to use these menus. Can you even update your trading block? Manage rosters. Is that where you have to go to edit lines? It's that difficult? Yup. It sure is. Edit lines. Let's go ahead and do best lines and see who is on the St. Louis Blues at this point in time. Steen, 88 overall. What a legend. We got Timothy, Jimothy, Bacchus, and Steen. That's a solid first line. Schwartz, Sazny, and Tarasenko as our second line. Ryan Reeves, Berglund, and Pajarvi as our third line. Porter, Ott, and Lapierre. I love that fourth line. Defensively, we got Bomeister playing with Petrangelo, and then we got Shattenkirk playing with Gunnarsson, and Cole playing with Jackman. Brian Elliott, will be tending the net at 86 overall and we have Jake Allen backing him up at 82. Trade and improve. Can you set the trade block from here or is there no such thing? There is such a thing. Surplus and wants. Okay, let's go ahead and just open it right up and see if we get a lot of trades or if we still don't get any. It's kind of crazy looking at this because it's pretty much the same thing in the modern games. It's just sort of like not restructured, but they changed the UI, I should say. They basically just gave it a facelift. I also just realized I was only making forwards as our desires and what we're willing to give up. So I need to go ahead and change that and I'll go to the surplus as well. All right, we're an open book. Let's go ahead and get the simulation started. I love the little security guards just standing in the, <laughs> the audience back there. I don't know why I said it like that. Why can I not talk when I make videos? It's making me so mad. Let's see if this simulation speed is ridiculous or not. I have a feeling that it's going to be so good. Here's the trade deadline. So I will sim up to that and we will see if we start getting trades or not. All right, so so it turns out that you will get finessed. We're losing Stasny and Ott and getting back basically a first round pick. Okay, so let's go ahead and accept it. But I will update the trading block so that we don't get completely fleeced. Our surplus is going to stay the same. The only thing I'm changing is the wants. I'm turning off draft picks and making sure that the players we're receiving are between the age of 24 and 34. We got absolutely rinsed in our first contest here against the New York Rangers. 5-0. Hopefully that's not foreshadowing the rest of the season. I'm actually wondering, how did we do this? The sim speed is outrageous. We're losing Butler and a third in exchange for Zatkoff. We will accept that, obviously, because we don't have a choice. Two, two, and one. That's not a terrible start. Could be better. Could be worse, though. Jerome Sampson is getting put on waivers. I'm gonna go ahead and decline that one. Leopold is heading out to Montreal in exchange for Peter Budai. Is there even a way to see overalls here? You can see potential contracts. That's about it. You have no idea what overall they are. Okay, well, except we are now 9-4-4, four, and four, so we're doing all right. There seems to be quite a few high-scoring games. Nobody wants to send us any blockbusters, eh? That Florida logo was the the goat. I love that thing. We shut out the Islanders for nothing and they took that personally, came back, and absolutely picked us apart 8-2. St. Louis definitely appears to be playoff bound, which I am gassed for. I'm glad that we landed on a team that will actually be competitive. When playing these older games too, the thing I'm most looking forward to is going to check out the league leaders after the season to find out, you know, just who was amazing in this game pretty much. But it's also cool to see players and the teams they used to be on like Petrangelo, for example, he looks so young in the picture. We have not received a trade in quite some time, but you know what? I'm sticking to my guns because if we don't, the second that we give them an inch, they're going to take a mile and I'm not here for it. The all-star break is inbound. 
but at this rate, it might actually take us a week to get there. All right, here we go. Sammy Blaze and Lapierre in exchange. I'm like, really? What are these trades, man? We're getting finesse still. Did the trading block get updated? I'm gonna go look. We're getting Kapeki in exchange for Pyarvi to sink and beach. All right, accept. He did too. Wait. No, he didn't. Never mind. I thought Jabroni edited our trading block, but apparently he did not. So that's interesting. Oh dear. We have a 73 overall on our fourth line now. Okay. So we still have our first line, Oshi, Bacchus, and Steen. Our second line is Berglund, Tarasenko, and Schwartz. That may have been the same as before, but now we have a fairly new bottom six. Another trade. This time it is coming from the Philadelphia Flyers. We will go ahead and accept that. With the trade deadline being in sight, I I don't think we're going to get too many more trades. I'm not upset about that, though, because our team is doing just fine the way it is. Another trade from the Flyers. Okay, I see you. Let's go ahead and accept that one as well. This is a big one. We're getting Vermette and McCallick in exchange for Gunnarsson, Cole, and that guy. So this will affect our starting lineup. Accept that, and let's go see how effective it is to our lineup. But before I could do that, we're losing Fabry. And we're getting Bergenheim. Well, that spices things up a bit. Our third line is now incredible. Defensively, we got Brent Regner will be our new final pairing there with Barrett Jackman. Just six more games before we reach the trade deadline. Will we see any more trades? Maybe. It seems like we're starting to get some more now that we're getting closer. Oh man, we're losing Ryan Reeves, but we're getting back Tori Mitchell on behalf of the St. Louis Blues. I accept your trade proposal. People are gonna think I'm the best GM ever with a trade like this. You know, what if I throw it back in their face? How about that? Gibbons will be joining the St. Louis Blues as well. We're also losing Vili Huso and getting back Jones. On that note, we have officially passed the trade deadline, so let's go put the lines together one more time to see what we have. Here is your final St. Louis Blues roster. Our third line is looking stellar. Defensively, we look like this, and I'm assuming in net it's still gonna be Elliot with Allen backing him up. Yeah, okay. Well, let's sim the rest of the season and see what happens. Does the post-trade deadline collapse work even in this game? By the looks of it, Kind of. 45 wins, three games to go. Never mind, I take that back. Two games to go. I still think we're gonna be pretty high up in the standings. It should be top 10 at least, I would think anyway. 46 wins is where we will end and we have Chicago in round one. It was good enough for second in the Central Division, 101 points. Minnesota had 102, just barely getting the better of us. Oh wow, Washington had 103, so we were right there. The 11th placed New York Rangers don't make it in. That is heartbreaking. Somehow Jaden Schwartz led our team with 74 points. Berglund had seven. Wait, hold on. What is going on here? Apparently our first line just didn't get points. Tara Sancho had 62. Pi Trangelo had 57. Bo Meester 55. Bacchus put up 53. Brian Elliott had a 910 save percentage. We got a 907 from Jake Allen. So pretty solid. 37, 21, and 5. And then 9, 6, and 1. Freddie Anderson led the league with 31 Ws. He had a 918 save percentage while while doing it. I see a 920 here from Braden Holpe. Pavlik, Ranta, Cam Ward, Backstrom, Jonathan Bernier, 86 overall. What a time to be alive. Rookie skaters, we got Evgeny Kuznetsov. He had 34 points in 82 games. And then we had Carl Klingberg, who had 24 points. We have Jerry D'Amigo. It's a pretty cool name. Johnny Goudreau put up four points in 27 games. Ranta was a rookie goalie. We also have Martin Jones as a rookie goalie. Tokarski, John Gibson, 85 overall already, but he was a rookie. Jake Allen was a rookie, and so was Hutchinson. EK65, lead defenseman, he had 70 points. Weber had 65, Suter 64, and Tobias Enstrom with 63. Stamkos made light work of the league. He got 59 goals, which looks like it's going to be a Rocket Richard on top. Of that he got 113 in the points category that's wild zach parise got 96 we got vanek with 85 here gets 83 datsuk put up 82 miku koivu put up 81 phil the thrill puts up 79 i'm gonna breeze past the playoffs here and by breeze past i mean i'm gonna go as fast as i possibly can as fast as the simulation engine will let me it'll probably speed up once we get swept in the first round because that's obviously just gonna happen it's a story as old as time. Okay, but hold on. We've pushed a best of three here, and now we are in the lead. Oh, it's a game seven against Chicago, of course. 
Why did I think otherwise? Glad to see that first round deletions were still a thing in NHL 15. I'm assuming we're gonna find out a winner any moment now. The New York Islanders that still have John Tavares. Schwartz once again carried us in the playoffs. He got eight points in seven games. He was the only point a game player and he's only 22. Pavelski clutched it out. He got 29 points in 24 games. Patty Marlowe got 28 and John Tavares also got 28. Grabowski put up 24. We got 23 from Patty Kane, Akpozo got 22, and then we got 20 from Taves and Burns. Anti Niemi did very well in the playoffs. A 923 save percentage. We got a 938 from Freddie, though, and a 958 from Ranta. However, he did only play one game by the looks of it. Let's check out the awards quick here. We already know that. And San Jose made it to the finals against the New York Islanders. Stamkos got the Art Ross. He also gets the heart. The Norris goes to Suter. Stamkos also gets the Lady Bang. Wow, he's cleaning up. Kuznetsov gets the Calder. The Consumite goes to Halak. Vesna to Johnny Quick. The WMM Jennings will go to none other than Marcus Andre Flower. The Bill Masterton goes to Dylan. Selkie to Datsuk. Ted Lindsay also to Stamkos. And the Rocket Richard will go to Stamkos. What a season from that guy. Here's the playoff tree. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. A intense game seven in the Stanley Cup Finals. I don't know why they have it. I guess, yeah, you want to say four to three instead of three to four. But it just kind of looks weird, you know? When I first looked at it, I thought San Jose won for a second. And I was so confused. All right, thank you for watching. I appreciate you. I'll see you soon.